skies were once filled with stars. Today, our own lights eclipse the darkness and spread steadily each day. Slowly, the dark places in Africa become the last refuge for one of our planet's most iconic animals. Fifty years ago, 450,000 lions lived here, and today, there may be as few as 20,000. And yet, in these remote places, some of the most dramatic stories on Earth are played out. They are harsh, sometimes violent, never malicious, and always real. This is a story of some of the last wild lions on Earth. of this darkness, our story begins. It is an old saga of life lived by tooth and claw. A lioness in perfect condition. It's unusual for a lioness to be without a pride, but she's not alone. She has a mate, a companion and protector, and the father of her cubs. The beginnings of a new pride for this unspoiled land deep in Botswana. is uneasy. they've been hearing for some time are getting closer. It puts them on edge. Invaders, and they suddenly materialize. Lions from the north, forced here by the relentless encroachment of man. They're ready to risk everything to win new territory. Her male has no choice but to fight. It's a battle that could change the bloodlines here forever.
invaders with a clear determination to win and to stay. When she finally emerges from hiding, her shoulder almost healed, she's ready to pick up her life. She starts by trying to find her mate. Every sound makes her freeze. Every breath of air brings unfamiliar scents. him. She is a fugitive in her own land. Survive here, she will have to submit to these new masters. But until the newcomers detect her presence, she still has a choice. The swirling air carries a hint of her unfamiliar scent. The hunt begins. She decides to leave, to leave immediately. For she has a secret, all 
that is left from our old life. A secret that must be protected. This will be her life now, to secure the survival of her cubs. With the males behind her, backtracking is impossible. The females of the marauding pride blocking her escape to the west. The leader will remember the violent night they last met as vividly as she does. She was left battered and bitten, bleeding to death. But she in turn left the largest of them with one eye blinded for life. It's a wound the silver eyed leader of the pride will never forget. They can smell her tracks. The storm ignites the bush and she's trapped. Now she must choose north towards the villages and people, or south along the fire line to an even more daunting obstacle for her, the swollen river. In this part of Africa, a mother is named after her firstborn as its protector. just a little smaller than the other two. Slower. Prone to getting lost. As the smallest, he must get used to being constantly bullied. It'll either build him up or wear him out. Marditown knows the pride will be coming after her, but what lies ahead is terrifying. Lions detest deep, open water. It hides things that seem unnatural to them. But the options behind are worse. If she stays to fight, the male lions will kill her cubs. It's their instinct to wipe the face of the earth clean of the old male's genes. She must make her decision now. No. The male cubs. 
Bob doesn't hesitate this time. He knows to stay close. His sister wades in more cautiously. But the third cub holds back, scared of the water. time the third cub plucks up enough courage, she's become an easy target, both on the land and in the water. males turn back into their newly won territory, satisfied that she and her cubs have been expelled forever. The silence is the condemnation. Mardita, the protector, has failed for the first time as a mother. As she turns away, she is turning her back on her past, on the pride that was so desperate to be rid of her. And she steps forward into an uncertain future with her two surviving cubs, the little male and his sister. The battle for the territory has been decided. Mardita and her cubs have escaped to an almost deserted island in the swamp. The only lions on this vast, isolated wilderness called Duba, in the middle of the Okavango Delta. Here, the land is plagued by seasonal floods and rivers that weave through it. If it is a refuge for them, it will be a wet one. A few weeks have passed. Food has been scarce, but there are still no signs of other lions, and they're starting to feel safe at last. The smaller cub has gained a renewed confidence by being one of just two cubs now. In his heart, he's a hunter, always ready to explore the endless possibilities that lie in wait for a cub with a restless spirit. Close call. 
He may have thought he so nearly notched up his first kill, but that little hunter's heart did skip a small beat today. The cowardly withdrawal by the elephant confirms that there will be another chance, perhaps when he's a bit older. Till today, she had only time to focus on escape and survival. But now she must find a way to get her cubs safely through their first critical year until they can fend for themselves. And as a single mother, this will take every ounce of her energy and intelligence. The fire and march of human settlements to the north have driven other animal refugees towards the island. Duba is about to change. These are some of Africa's most aggressive animals. Their sharp horns and bone-crushing bosses are perfect weapons, and their massive numbers give them confidence. At the head of the herd is one of the most fearsome of them, a scar-faced bull weighing almost a ton. For the past few weeks, this has been her island. The arrival of the buffalo brings hope as possible prey. But also fear. These will be her new enemies on the island. Buffalo are not easy prey. They dislike the scent of lions, and they don't hesitate to attack. so far has been a litany of narrow escapes, one long line of enemies out to get them. A strange way to start life as king of the beasts. With more and more of the newcomers flowing onto her island, Mardita and her cubs are destined to run into them again. The herd's pathfinder is now aware that this island has lions, and from now on, he'll always be on the alert. It will be an almost daily conflict, unavoidable in this open, yet confined space. going to be at their mercy. She will have to learn more about this new present. She will have to test them for weaknesses, 
and she must look beyond the strong outer wall and their heavy armaments. In time, she must become expert at finding those weak points. Small hidden chinks in the armor that will stumble out into view and excite her instincts as a huntress. Night is an advantage for her. She can hide in the shadows of a crescent moon and let her eyes brighten to take in her quarry. she has to become invisible. It is what a solitary hunter does best. helps her perform like a silent ghost, flitting in and out of reality. now battle for the survival of their young. Buffalo desperate to deflect an attack. Lioness eager to double back and strike quick fatal blows to earn a meal for her cubs. It's the eternal dance of Africa.
young lions will go hungry a little longer. When the buffalo calf escapes, it carries a chilling message of a near miss written in blood back to the scar-faced bull. It's a race against time. The cubs are demanding more from Maditao as they grow and her milk dries up. The small male doesn't seem to want to compete. But while he bonds with his mother, his sister grows stronger all the time. Her cub's survival is a hard taskmaster for her. And despite the searing heat and humidity, she forces herself up again, back onto the path of the buffalo. She seems to understand that the herd will provide if she can just crack that code. She has a fresh tactic in mind. Having taken up her position, she tries something very sophisticated. A full-on, out-in-the-open, rather desperate charge. It panics the herd. A lion hunt is as much a mind game as it is a physical explosion of violence. What she doesn't know is that the commotion of the hunt has drawn interest from across the river. Silver Eye. strip of water divides them at this point in the river. The intensity keeps Marditao focused, perhaps too focused. many a bold and sinister thing. Thank you. 
signs of change often come in the slight shift of grass in the breeze or a hint of a scent that brings disturbing news to Madita. She and her cubs once again stand directly in the path of an aggressive, half-blind lioness and her followers. Marditao's hostile warning buys her time against these huge lions, who present a united force, though lack the confidence of her local knowledge. The cubs understand her body language. They know what to do. This territory is her last option. There is nowhere else for her to go. If she flees from the island, she'll immediately have to face the males patrolling the far bank. And if she were to avoid them, at the horizon, there are people, villages, guns. The river is her defense and her confinement. Her last stand. This island lives and breathes by a different set of rules to the rest of Africa. has some lessons to learn before they can call it their own. The first is that it's a mistake to sleep too deeply on Duba Island, especially when a scar-faced bull has smelled the spilled blood of his young. the buffalo attack. She pictures the chaos from bitter experience. sound. The crash of water as the buffalo retreat takes on a new significance to her. Water. Each crystal clear splash clarifies an idea. Buffalo flee to water to escape. They use it as a protective barrier between themselves and the lions, and yet they still panic, bunch together and make mistakes.
she can make water her strength, it will be their weakness. Silver Eye has noticed the silent hunter on the move, and what she has left behind in the grass. Casual awakening is deceptive. She's giving the huntress time to leave, enough time to get involved in the hunt. bothers Mardi Tau for a moment, some instinct. But there seems nothing amiss. just deterred for the time being. It's a question that would haunt any mother with vulnerable young driven by conflicting imperatives. To hunt and feed her young or to stay and protect them. safely in retreat. The young male cub turns his attention to a much greater challenge, like being king of the hill, even just for a moment. For a young lion, being lord of all you survey is almost your birthright. If only one sister would accept it. the high ground is something to fight hard for, but then 
But when one's opponent unexpectedly gives up, then the triumph of victory feels a little hollow. day she hesitates or fails, her cubs get closer to starving. of the sheer power of the scar-faced bull and the aggression of all the buffalo. seems to see the solution to her problem. This violent fighting will keep the pride away. If she can move her cubs up close to the herd, but keep them hidden, they will be safe from Silver Eye, and Marditao will be able to lead them to hunt again. silently, keeping close, the cubs follow her every move. It's a risk. If the buffalo hear them, they could turn back and attack. They're surrounded by demons. Nerves of steel. But any thoughts of a single handed defense yeah. are short lived. dawn, she's in a position to attempt the unknown. A water hunt. Oh. 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 
With the cubs nearby but safe, it's time to concentrate on her new tactic. Now she has the advantage. She's already overcome most of her fear of water, but the buffalo won't know that. And they have hit the deep channel where they bunch together. The angry bull pathfinders horn each other out of the way in the confusion. Confusion is exactly what she's looking for. They don't expect her to come out of the water. They don't understand that shape, that wet smell, that calculated approach designed to cause stragglers to panic. This is the chance she can't let go, a lone cow isolated without help. calls enrage the herd. she will not confront is a large crocodile. But she still has the advantage of almost total concealment. first attempt has given her hope. The confused herd is just too enticing. And the deep water is now her speciality. Now is her time.
Their success is celebrated by anyone else who can take advantage. Africa is as dispassionate about great victory as it is about loss. It drives all to learn and accept fate and step forward towards the next day. At least Mardita has eaten and in a few hours she will produce milk. And later, she will go boldly into the water and hunt the herd again. But that is for tomorrow. Now, she is exhausted. That old lesson of never sleeping soundly is not to be ignored. There are risks attached to leaving the cubs in the path of the buffalo, stirred to panic. There are a thousand reasons to enjoy the dawn, especially after a successful hunt. There is only one reason that she quickens her pace. Her calls are not being answered.
every time she leaves them alone, they wander off. The little male has been going further and further, but both always return to the same spot. But not today. a strong scent of buffalo, there is no sign of the pride, so she carefully follows the cub's trail away from the hiding place and out into the open. A call. It's the female cub, way across the open terrain in the distance, clearly upset but alive. Tower the Protector has not failed completely. She has found one of the cubs. Her kill has brought a loyal following of scavengers, and they can sense some weakness about her. sign of the little male, she'll defend her last cub against the mob of hyenas at all costs.
this moment. She seems to understand the risks of following the buffalo. And what happened here last night. just long enough to give hope. But she can't mend a broken back. No amount of care, licking, defending, will fix this. When she steps away, finally, Mardita leaves behind her legacy, the last of her male's bloodline, and her name. She is Mardita, mother and protector of lions, no more. sparked by any disturbance, but this time 
she will not retreat. And now the past strengthens her. extracted from Silver Eye is enough for the Lone Lioness. She has something left to do. And in this moment of strength, something fundamental changes. Something the pride recognizes. They sense it in the determination in her step and the look in her eye. Something unseen. She is transformed into a leader. Silver I can do to follow her old enemy, especially across water, especially as a lower ranking hunter. this herd for 10 years or longer. He has won the herd's allegiance with blood. They won't abandon him now. She is used to standing alone. Suddenly the scales tip in the bull's favor. The loyal horde fights back, winning the advantage and forcing the lions into disarray, destroying their confidence and scattering them to the wind.
feeling divided and weak. She can't push forward again. They're exhausted. But something beyond the buffalo catches her eye, a disturbance in the herd. A lion cub. is a violent explosion of motherhood that drives the buffalo back away from her defenseless cub. At last, she has hope. She might still be able to fulfill that ambition to raise at least one cub. tormentor to compassionate mother attracts the buffalo's interest, a slow, determined march of aggression. Never. 
Hardita splits the herd and routes the front rank. She seems to understand that behind her, Silver Eye will lead the attack. It's a moment of trust. The trust is well placed. to be done. To raise her cub successfully, she needs to accept this pride as her own. When she and Silver Eye finally make peace, they mend themselves and bind their pride, their future, together. This unlikely survivor, a straggler with the heart of a lion, be one of the last. Will he get to grow a mane and strengthen through adolescence? Will he have a chance to wear the battle scars of a mature male, each one a badge of honor that started here today? one of the last wild lions on earth. Will he wander alone in the last of these wild places as our world fills up with lights, clutter, noise and people? In 15 years, there will be 8 billion human beings on Earth. How long these last 20,000 lions survive will depend entirely on us. 